Good morning, happy Sabbath, church. Are we glad to be in the house of the Lord? All the time, God is good. And we thank the Lord for sparing us to see yet another Sabbath. He's brought us through another untried week. And for that, we have to be gracious. We have to be thankful to the Lord. Now it's adult lesson study time. And like we heard earlier, we have some beautiful lessons this week. But before we dive into our lesson study, let's close our eyes and invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words. Lord, we ask you, because of your words, to fill us with that zeal, that urgency, Lord, to tell this good news. Forgive us of our sins, wash us, cleanse us, as we seek to learn more about you, dear God, and to put it in practice today. These mercies we ask in your Son's name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now, this week we are looking at what topic? What's our topic for this week? Mission to the powerful. Now, in Matthew 28, verse 19, the word says, Go therefore and teach all nations. All nations. That means everyone, right? Rich and the poor. Am I right? Yes. Now, we are at lesson number nine, as we said. But lesson number eight, the previous lesson, that topic was mission to the needy. Remember that? Now, here's a question. Do the rich and powerful have need? Okay. Are they not needy? Okay. Now, Lesson number eight spoke about the paralyzed man who was let down through a roof by his friends. Can a rich man be paralyzed? Huh? So, both the rich and the poor can be needy, right? Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out why we had a mission to the needy and now a mission to the rich and powerful if both rich and powerful, poor and simple, are equally needy. What are they in need of? What are all of us in need of? Lesson number seven spoke about the mission to my neighbor. Do you have rich neighbors? <laughs> huh? <laughs> do you have rich neighbors? Or do you only have poor neighbors? Or do you have a combination of rich and poor neighbors? Combination. So we see we are all in this together. Rich and poor. Yet it appears necessary to break the command out to mission to the neighbors, mission to the needy, mission to the rich, and mission to the powerful. And why is this? Well, in our case, we have gone to the park to assist the homeless, haven't we? We have given thanksgiving gifts to the poor and needy, haven't we? Have we? But what have we given to the rich? Anything? Huh? Nothing? Yes. Yet? Yes. Okay. Okay. Do we believe that the rich has no need for the community service department? Do we believe that? No? Okay. Huh? They need the word of the Lord. They need other things. Not material things. Okay. Now, 
are we slow or reluctant because we are convinced that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Is that, is that, is that what's happening here? Huh? Is that, is that it? Not necessarily. Yes. Yes. More. Yeah. That they do not right. They don't not give you the title. Oh, they don't. What does the memory text say? What does it say? It says, what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? So it doesn't matter if you are rich, if you have a lot of material stuff. There's nothing that you can exchange for yourself, right? I have a quick story. When I look at it, I realize that it's not as quick as I thought, but I'll make it as quick as I can. Now, one day when I was about eight years old, I found a $10 note under a stone. Now, why I went to that stone to this day is a mystery to me. It's not a small stone that an eight-year-old could readily pick up. It was a heavy stone, so I was only able to kind of tilt that stone. But under that stone was a $10 note. Delighted, I ran to my mother. I, I am not sure if she remembers this, but she's sitting right there. I ran to her and I told her about what I, what I found. She said, okay, okay, someone lost it. I'm going to keep it until that person returns and asks for it. I'll keep it for as long as for a reasonable time, I, I, I assume she was saying. Now, months went by, and no one returned to claim that ten, um, those $10 notes, right? So at that time, she said, I'll use it to purchase a book for you. And she did. She purchased the book, and she presented the book to me. But I didn't like the book. <laughs> no. Remember, I was eight years old. This book had no pictures in it. And at that time, I didn't read a book without a picture, right? So I, I told her, keep that book until I'm ready for it, right? Now, 11 years later, I remembered the book. At the age of 19, I had a mission to the powerful. My mission was based mainly on listening to radio broadcast of non-Adventist pastors. Then I would call up their offices, make appointment to go and speak to them about things that I thought they were saying contradictorily. Now, this day I had an appointment with a Pentecostal bishop, Bishop Green, now deceased. Our topic of discussion was to be speaking in tongues as a sign of the Holy Spirit in one's life. I was busy preparing for my talk with the bishop when I suddenly remembered the book. Bear in mind, I didn't know the title of the book, nor what the book contains. I only flipped through the pages and, and noticed there were no pictures and, and, and was not interested. However, I sent to my mom, I said, that book that you bought for me, do you still have it? She said, yes. I said, send it to me. 
To my surprise, when I opened the package and looked at the title of the book, the title was, or is, Charisma of the Spirit, a journalist looks at the tongue's movement. The book had everything I needed for my discussion with the bishop. I left the bishop speechless, without words to defend his beliefs. His remarks to me were, I would love to have you in my church. Our people do not know their Bible. Now, I wish I could tell you that that bishop became a Seventh-day Adventist, but I can't. But I'm sure he was left with something to ponder. Of course, the work is not ours. It's the Holy Spirit, right? The book my mom bought with those $10 is old and tattered now. But it is still intact. Now, flipping through its pages, I can still see where I highlighted for my discussion with the bishop many, many years ago when I was only 19 years old. This book is still here with me today. And I bet my mom will not remember it. <laughs> but it is still here. I, I handle it with care because it's, it's a little frail. But nonetheless, I treasure this book. Now the lesson says, scripture is full of rich and powerful men who not only need the Lord, but people who were also busy taking the word of God to others. People like who? Let's turn to Sunday. Nebuchadnezzar. What do we know about Nebuchadnezzar? Huh? He was a king. He was a powerful king, right? Now, many of us do not readily take the message to the rich and powerful because of what? Fear. Fear is one reason many of us are reluctant to evangelize the rich and powerful. Many of us are afraid of retribution. And we are afraid of reprimand. Sometimes we say we do not know how to speak. But you know, it's funny. In the song, the opening hymn, it says, If you cannot speak like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. But who was someone? A prophet who said, who used these very same words. Jeremiah, yeah, Moses too. But Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 verse 6 told the Lord, I cannot speak for I am a child. Yes. What did the Lord say to him? The Lord rebuked him saying, say not I am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. Be not afraid of their faces. That's a message to us. Be not afraid of their faces. Right? No. <laughs> and so we see Jeremiah in chapter 36 and verse 2 writing a scroll with the Lord's prophecy about the destruction of Jerusalem at the hand of none other but Nebuchadnezzar. Now, in chapter 37 of, of Jeremiah, we see that the king of Israel was upset at Jeremiah's prophecy to the extent that his men took and burned the scrolls. In fact, they accused Jeremiah of supporting Nebuchadnezzar. And as a result, they placed Jeremiah in a dungeon. Meanwhile, Nebuchadnezzar heard about the prophecy. He was encouraged. And he boldly overran Jerusalem. 
Nebuchadnezzar was so pleased, he released Jeremiah from prison. And not only that, he paid him a, a reward for the encouraging prophecy. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know this until, until this week. Notice here that Jeremiah preached to one powerful man. That was King Zedekiah. But it was another powerful man who listened and obeyed. What is the lesson there for us? We might approach someone who is powerful. And to us we get no response. We think that was futile. But that approach could have the effect that powerful man could in some way influence even a more powerful man. Because in this story, Nebuchadnezzar was more powerful than King Zedekiah. Right? Yes. So we see Nebuchadnezzar, and, and this is something that might be surprising to us, but Nebuchadnezzar was originally introduced to God through Jeremiah. Yes. In fact, in Jeremiah 40, verse 2 to 3, Nebuchadnezzar's captain declared that Jerusalem was given to Nebuchadnezzar because Israel sinned against God and refused to obey God's voice. So that was Nebuchadnezzar's people making that statement. So th that was an introduction to God long before the experience with Daniel. Do you believe that the people of the world know when we mess up? Huh? They do? Do you believe that they know what we believe? Some do? Those of us from, from, from Jamaica may be able to relate to this. On Friday evenings, many of us would be rushing to get home and we would have to take public transportation. And sometimes because of huge amount of people trying to get on bus to get home, you're at the bus stop late. And very often, Someone would, would, would tap you on the shoulder and said, Son, I said. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> right? So, so, so here it is. Nebuchadnezzar, we, we consider Nebuchadnezzar to be a heathen king. But he was talking about how sinful, how rebellious the children of Israel were before God. So, so, so they know, right? Of course. Now, the lesson says God's judgment was executed on Nebuchadnezzar similar to the Israelite king. Nebuchadnezzar knew the consequences of not obeying God. Remember, he was just speaking about it a while ago. Yet, he chose to disobey the words given to Daniel in that he was repeating the very thing that King Zedekiah did. Isn't that fascinating? Now, because of his disobedience, he was made what? He was made insane, yeah? Yeah, he was sent out in the field like an animal to eat grass, right? Isn't that what happened? Yes. Now, Nebuchadnezzar came to his senses, finally, right? And what did he do? He acknowledged the creator God. He showed that God cares about the wealthy and the powerful as well the weak and the needy. And I hate to say the needy because associated with the poor because both rich and poor are needy, right? All of us are needy. Now God indeed is no respecter of persons. Now, here's a question. Should we be? No. Why not? <laughs> yes. Yes. Right? We should follow the examples of God, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. God is no respecter of person. We should not, here's this word, discriminate. Can we discriminate? We usually say we are being discriminated. But can we discriminate? Yes. yes, we can. Yes, we can. We should not pick and choose. Because we do not know what the Spirit has done ahead of us. 
we should just go willingly. Go willingly. In, in that respect, you know, I, I've got to say this, that the Jehovah's Witness knock on every door. <laughs> they do not, like, skip doors. Huh? They, they, yeah, they will put their foot in the door. Yes. And when they knock the door, they, they do not care if it's a rich or a poor. And, and I believe that is a right attitude. You know, we, we, should, we should adopt that attitude. Yes. The same thing happened to me recently. Yes. I wanted to go to this home. Yes. For young people. Mm-hmm. Because I just figured to myself we could help them a yes. lot. Yes. A Catholic organization. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, I don't want to go there because they're not going to receive me. Right. And, uh, you know, I kept thinking over, thinking it over. And, um, you know, it's like I had to drive to go. Yeah. So I finally went. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, the doors were open open so widely yes. for me. Mm-hmm. And then fast, you know, I'm going to let this be quick. Now, um, a few days ago, I called back. And the person, because I talked to her about Adventism and all of that, right? person called back and asked me, how come you're an Adventist? Mm-hmm. Why are you an Adventist? Mm-hmm. For what reason mm-hmm. you became an Adventist? Wow. I said, you know what? Could we have lunch? Yes. She said yes. So that's what we are going to do. We are going to have lunch together. Yes. That, exactly right. So we need, yes. we need to obey. Yes. We, we need, need to we adhere need, we need to, to what obey. God says. Yes, 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 yes. And, and that leads us over to Monday. Monday we're talking about Naaman. Now, what do we know about Naaman? Huh? Mm-hmm. Say what? Powerful? Huh? Yes, he was a leper. You know, the, the, the scriptures start by listing the accolades of Naaman. He was a mighty man, a man of valor. And then it says, but. No, you, you know what the word but, it's a conjunction. You know what it does in the middle of sentences. Now, if you start with positives and then you insert the word, the word but, yes. you just negate all the positives, mm-hmm. right? right? So he was all of that, but he was a leper. Yeah. Now, what do you know about leprosy? Contagious. Yeah. Many years ago, I had a chance to visit a leopard colony and to see the people and, and minister to them. It was such a blessing and they were so receptive. But you know what? One of the things I had to do is make sure that I had no fear, that I, de- I depended on God as, as the man of God says, I was not to have fear of anything because God would protect me even if serpents would bite the man of God, he would not be uh, like like Paul was. He was bitten by the serpent, and he just shook it off in the fire. And I took that attitude, and the Lord blessed me as I ministered to that colony. Amen. 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 Yes. Now, we, we said that leprosy is a very infectious disease. And because of that, we... We might be, yeah, we might be fearful. We isolate them or us, right? And how is it transmitted? No, airborne droplets, like coughs, sneezes, those kinds of stuff. Now, the research suggests that there are three main types of leprosy. The first one, tuberculoid leprosy. Now, this one is mild, right? Lepromatous leprosy. This one is a severe one. And then they have a kind of borderline leprosy, which is kind of combination of the two previous ones. Now, people with leprosy, as Pastor can attest to, 
have widespread sores and lesions affecting nerves, skins, organs. It is very contagious. Naaman seemed to have had the severe type. Now, there's no description in, in, in scripture about his physical condition, but we can, we can ascertain this because of, of, of this other event. Remember a gentleman by the name of Gehazi was a servant of Elisha. And remember that Naaman had brought much treasure, both to pay the king and to pay the prophet. But the prophet refused, right? And, the, and, and Gehazi, the prophet's servant, thought that was not a smart move by, 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 by Elisha. He said, Elisha is crazy. <laughs> this is a lot of money here. <laughs> and we are needy. <laughs> And, and, and wouldn't, you, wouldn't you have said, the Lord has blessed us with these gifts and we are re refusing it. <laughs> wouldn't we have said that? Be, be sensible. You're praying for all these things and, and they're presented and now you're turning it, you're back on it. So Gehazi thought and said, well, if he doesn't want it, I will take it. All right. So he went after it. And what happened? Now, Elisha was very upset at that. And he promised Gehazi that the leprosy that was on Naaman will now be on him. And not only him, but his generation. And, what, and, and it, the, the, the Bible says that Gehazi left the presence of Elisha with leprosy as white as snow. So, so, so we're saying if his leprosy was that bad and it was Naaman's leprosy then we can assume that Le Naaman had a very severe case of leprosy, right? Now, Naaman's leprosy was very, very bad, as we said, right? And rightly so, because the Lord had said in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, my strength is made perfect in weakness, right? Now, he needs a big job <laughs> to prove that I am God. Uh -huh. So this is partly why Naaman's condition was so severe. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what would witnesses say? Oh, that was an easy thing. <laughs> Just rub a little eel in oil and, and it would have been good. No. Yes, yes. Now this needed a miracle. Yes, and yes. a miracle is what we had. Amen. Yes. Question. If you were given a chance to either work with or witness to Naaman, would you gladly take that job? No. Why not? You're afraid of being affected with the leprosy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also afraid that you couldn't help it. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Definitely. Right? <laughs> now remember, God is no respecter of person. Amen. So true. Right? It means one of two things. He causes rain to fall on the just as and well as the unjust. The unjust. Yeah. Right? right? His words must be preached, again, without discrimination. Right. Rich or poor. Whatever the condition. And here's another question. Did the captive, the captive servant, the maid, did she volunteer? To go serve Naaman's house? No? How did she end up there? She was a captive. She, yeah, exactly. It's in the name, the captive mate. <laughs> she was a captive. Here's another one. Were you the mate? And you're there. No, remember, you, you were being captured. Ripped away from your family, your community, your land, all these things. And now you're placed with strangers in a strange land. Even the man who was responsible for ripping you away. And lo and behold, you're looking at him and he's covered with leprosy. Would you not say, as we would say today, karma is a beast? Would you not say that? Huh? I mean, what would you say? Would you gladly go to him and say, I know how you can be helped? Is that what you would do? 
You would do that? Huh? No, knowing who God is and the love of God, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But out there, if I were out there, mm -hmm. I would say all kind of judgmental thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad for mm -hmm. the blessing of knowing God. Yes, 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 yes. That, that's, that's the correct response. But our human nature would say otherwise. Right? Didn't David say, Lord, punish my enemies? Right. Right. Naaman was an enemy to the captive. Right. Why didn't she read a psalm? <laughs> she could have, right? But the God in us prevents us from being malicious or otherwise. Right? Yes, yes. Now, the maid was uniquely placed and her testimony resonated in Naaman's house. How do we know that? She mentioned to Naaman's wife, I know a man. You know, you know many times we are ashamed to say that we are Christians, you know. Right? And sometimes we are even ashamed to say that we are Seventh-day Adventist Christians. We will not utter it. But this maid, even within her circumstances, proclaimed, I know a man. Mm -hmm. Did they take her seriously? Yes. yes. They took her seriously. Yes. Which meant that they must have respected her. Right? This is the captain of, 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 of the army. In our situation, we would say, this is a four-star general. Mm -hmm. And a young girl said, I know a man. Yeah. And he jumped on his jet, as they would today, and flew to a little community, yes. which he didn't like. Mm -hmm. Did he like it? <laughs> he, was, he was quarreling. He was miserable. He was, he, he, he was full of pride. All these kind of stuff, right? Please, we have watching. Yes. She was, she said she, she was an example mm -hmm. in the home. Amen. And she must have been. And, and, and in, the, in, 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 in the reading, Ellen White said, she was a product of good home training. You see that? <laughs> so now here is the thing. As parents, we have an obligation to prepare the children, right? I mean, Scripture has said, train up a child in the way he should go. And it promises that if she departs or he departs, when he's old, he will turn, right? Yes. I am just thinking of Naaman. Yes. And how he must have been suffering yes. for him to obey the little maid. Yes. You know, um, you said, obviously, he had leprosy extremely bad. Yes. He must have had it extremely bad yes. to listen to her and to obey Yes. My, a proud man like that. Yes, My yes, goodness. yes. After the elder, I want to say something. Yes. I want to say that that this little girl was so home trained spiritually that, and I'm thinking she was around 13 or 14 years old, according to the scripture, the way it says it. And that, you know, who would listen? What great man would listen to a, a little child like that, you know? Yes. But something in this little girl's voice and manner persuaded those who were listening, maybe we need to listen to this child. Yes. And as a result of it, he got the blessing of his life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I look at it a different approach on the lesson because this, the, the title of it is Mission to, to Whom? To the Powerful. Okay. And the teacher asked a question. If somebody like this come to us, would we go to them? 
in my mind, remember when he had leprosy, it was covered up. Usually if you have leprosy, you have to be, you know, separated. And another key thing is COVID was not the first thing that ever happened. It wasn't the first time man has ever been separated. Social yeah. distancing. Mm -hmm. It has been way back from Bible time. Yeah. That's one thing for sure. So if you know you're sick, you stay home. Mm -hmm. Talking about this, we are in the flu season. Mm -hmm. If you're coughing, sneezing kind of thing, it's okay for you to stay home. Mm -hmm. Don't come and sick everybody else, okay? <laughs> so now, <laughs> my as well throw this out here. So now, for, for this young lady was captured away from her home to a strong a strange location, and for her without any animosity to go to her mistress, would my master go somewhere? Mm. Yes, and Jesus said this, give, me, give the same example, right? We, I forgot the scripture, let me go find it. He says, except, verily ever I say unto you, except ye be converted mm -hmm. and become as a little children, mm -hmm. ye shall not, what? Mm -hmm. enter mm -hmm. and that is true when mm -hmm. we are not converted and children no matter how bad you are to them mm -hmm. don't don't abuse children right mm -hmm. but no, no matter how bad you abuse them they still love you mm -hmm. they forget so quick mm -hmm. we don't forget mm -hmm. so Naaman of course he was in need mm -hmm. how, no matter how strong and how powerful he was he was in need he wanted to be made whole yes and no matter exactly who would have told him where to go to be made whole, mm -hmm. he would have gone. Mm -hmm. So that little children told him, he went to his bus, his bus sent a message to that country's bus, mm -hmm. and that country's bus was very messed up because I don't know what to do, I don't do anything. Mm -hmm. But God, through Elisha, mm -hmm. sent a message and sent him to us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So God can use anything mm -hmm. and anyone yes. to have his mission go forward. Yes. So yes. we yes. then... Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to bring in. Mm -hmm. We sometimes have a prejudice. Mm -hmm. You know, you only white guys prejudice, but black people got prejudice too. Mm -hmm. Caribbean people got prejudice too. Mm -hmm. African American got prejudice. We all have prejudice. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. As Christians, we got prejudice. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So if we were to put our prejudices aside mm -hmm. and allow God to use us for his glory, mm -hmm. there will be nobody that we will feel intimidated mm -hmm. to minister upon. Yes. And that's why this lesson is very important. Yes. Yes. The president needs us. Yes. Trump needs us. Yes. The governor needs us. Yes. The mayor needs us. Yes. The police officers needs us. Mm -hmm. So in other words, everybody needs us mm -hmm. to tell them about Jesus. Amen? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, one more second, I'm going to leave you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two, let's more say. Nebuchadnezzar in order for him to hear the message, he needs a Daniel. Yes. That's right. That's right. How can they go without mm -hmm. a preacher? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Mm -hmm. For Naaman to know about God, he needs somebody from Israel. Mm -hmm. That little boy, that little girl, that little girl mm -hmm. and to Elisha. Mm -hmm. He needs somebody. In other words, and the next one, I'm going to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And if everything that the Lord needs... God needs us to tell. Mm -hmm. And we must be willing to go and tell, no matter whatever it is. Mm -hmm. We may be afraid of COVID. I'm not going to minister to somebody with COVID. But if God calls us to minister to somebody, go ahead and minister no matter what. Yeah. If we catch a disease and doing God's work, to God be praised. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I guarantee you, if you go in God's errand, protected. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. We have to realize too that God helped Naaman to them to win the Syrian war. I read mm -hmm. it in the lesson. And and doing so, God has his eyes on him. Mm -hmm. It's just for someone mm -hmm. to tell him what he should do. Yes. And and it's indeed a blessing. Yes, 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 yes. Now, continuing, many rich and powerful people are trapped in desperate circumstances. They need our testimony. This is what the elder was saying. How can we help? Again, there is a fear factor. We are intimidated. We think this person is too high and mighty. We are scared to approach. Maybe someone else, maybe not us. But we, but we got to allow the Holy Spirit to help us to overcome 
that fear so that we can, Lord's work can be, can be done. I want to run over quickly to Nicodemus. There's just so much stuff to talk about. Nicodemus was an educated man, right? The Bible calls him teacher of Israel, right? Ruler of the Jews. That is um, John 3 verse 1. Clearly an educated man. But what did he need? He needed the truth, right? Yes, like every one of us. The point is, both rich and poor are needy, right? Does the teacher need to be taught? Oh, yes. Hmm? Of course. Of course. It says, even in his vaunted knowledge and wisdom, Nebuchadnezzar. Nicodemus, rather, had a great need for the Savior. Right? Of course. Of course. Now, even after his conviction, his conviction that Jesus was sent of God, he still did not openly acknowledge that he was a follower of Christ. Do you see a problem here? Sometimes you will take the message to a powerful person. And that powerful person will be touched. Yes. Didn't a, a, a powerful man say to Paul, almost persuaded. <laughs> yes. That's right. right? Those words are being marinated in the mind of that powerful person. And in Nicodemus' case, he was convicted but he did not openly profess. He quietly. Is that a problem? Huh? It still happened. It's not a problem. He, he, he was so convicted of Christ. Yes. He was with the young man who went to bathe the body of Jesus. Yes. To give it to him. And it was Nicodemus and this young man. Yes. Yes, definitely. Morning, happy Sabbath. Just a quick point on that. Um, sometimes fear of people will cause us to hide our faith and not acknowledge and not acknowledge that we've been um, set free. Mm-hmm. We've been um, given a new life, and so. We have to ask God, like you said, help us to overcome that intimidation of being fearful of people, no matter what our status may be. Yes. And then we'll be free Mm -hmm. to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Even to the rich, right? Over in Wednesday, we're looking at mission to the rich, right? Now, here's a quick question. What's the purpose of wealth? While you're thinking about that, is wealth a blessing? We are blessed to be a blessing. That's it. Yes. Wealth is a blessing. We are given to give. Right? But, but here we find the rich young ruler. Now, Jesus called the rich young ruler. He said, he, he said, the Bible says, Jesus looked at him. And loved him. And said to him, sell all that you have and come and follow me. That was a call to discipleship, you know. He might have been one of the twelve, you know. But he could not separate himself from his wealth. Right? What should be our attitude to wealth? We're wrapping up. Now, in, in, in closing, the rich young ruler asked Jesus, What good thing, what good thing shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus went through a lot of things about the commandment, but essentially he said to him, the good thing is go and sell. Now he did not receive that response very well. 
You know, sometimes we pray and we ask God, how should I do this? What should I do? And when the answer comes, we don't take lightly to it. No. Now, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. I mean, but, but our attitude should be, here I am, Lord. Send me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words. Help us, Lord, to put your commands in practice. And now, Lord, as we go through the rest of our services, we ask you to continue to abide with us. These mercies we ask in your Son's name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen.